This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Okay, we're back. We're live for the 4 o'clock block. This is Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. And the guy on my left is Attila Ceres. Attila Ceres, welcome to the show. It's been nice. It's, we, it's been a long time. It's nice to see you now. Well, it's good to see you, too. You yeah, keep getting younger every time I see you. Yeah, so do you. I don't know how, you know, maybe we're take, drinking the same water. Until it was a host on Think Tech for a long time, uh, back a couple of years ago, I guess. And a lot has happened since then. He's been building his company, which is SOSTechSolutions.com. Yeah? Uh, you got right. it. And um, he's been doing cybersecurity. So we're calling this show, uh, It's a New Year in Cybersecurity, because there's a lot of developments there. Yeah, that's his logo and everything. And show show a picture of his uh, of his website as it exists. Yeah, there it is. It's coming. I know it's coming. I see it coming. Watch this. Poof. TV magic. TV magic. Poof. There it is. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> so <clears throat> I've I've sort of summarized what you've been doing, but give me a little detail on that, Attila. Sure. I mean, there's a lot of small to medium sized businesses in Hawaii. They're all subject to the same kind of demands and, and uh, problems that the big companies have. So the idea is to bring that kind of enterprise level protection to the Hawaii business market because we need it here. Uh, any sort of disruptions in any sort of businesses here, be it food, be it retail, be it wholesale, any of that stuff can really mess up the economy. Yeah, on a larger scale, can mess us all up. You know, if some critical function in the economy goes down, we all suffer. So, uh, on a, a public policy point of view, it's valuable to do what you're doing, and increasingly important, I would say. Uh, we saw that on um, on Saturday. We saw how important computers are. We're, we're completely dependent on them now, and therefore we have to make them work. But there are things that get in the way. Nasties. There are nasties. Can we talk about some of the nasties? You have a newsletter. Talk about your newsletter and talk about the article that you had, which was about hmm, hacker, hackers got lucky um, at Christmas. Of course. So there's a, something called Grateful POS. Now, if you haven't heard of this, you will. It's very new. Uh, what happened is a bunch of malicious software got on point of sale systems. Now, I'm not sure if you know this, but point of sale systems are essentially computers. And those computers are swiping credit cards, and that Grateful POS software silently made its way onto thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, of point of sale systems. Still uh, uh, figuring like out the numbers. horse kind of thing. Exactly. And the worst part was that no antivirus software that was currently on the market of the top 65 antivirus softwares could find it. So what that meant is it was siphoning off credit card numbers and sending it off to a far off country to fund human trafficking, drug trafficking, organized crime. And all that stuff uh, was affecting uh, local businesses all throughout here. the United States here. and here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the, there's uh, some damage control that's uh, being done. But uh, in the coming weeks and months, we're going to start seeing the outcome of that. Uh, you know, isn't it interesting that we have all these these uh, hacks and uh, you know ransomware attacks all in 2017, and now organized crime is stronger than ever. Third world countries are, are have the funds to. Uh, to build uh, weapons of mass destruction and send them our way potentially, uh, and uh, you know who knows also what we're going to see. Second and first tier, tier countries too. Yeah, you know, first world countries. There are people. Yeah. You know. Well, just rewinding a little bit in the timeline, if you look back in November of 2016, when WikiLeaks uh, originally left out uh, some of these uh, some of these problems that were uh, being used, some of these exploits. Uh, a few months later, uh, we saw the WannaCry. Uh, ransomware attack, yeah. uh, and that WannaCry ransomware attack uh, took down uh, computers all from London to Thailand, all across the way. You know, so so big commercial uh, computer systems were held ransom. Uh, ran millions of dollars of ransomware payments went out. It's been confirmed to, to North Korea, and then six months later, North Korea has a new missile program. Wonder where they got the funding from? Oh, that's really mm -hmm. stinky. Mm -hmm. Came from them, huh? Well, it's it's confirmed. I'm not repeating anything that uh, you can't Google yourself and find out to confirm. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, so you can talk stinky about them. They've been stinky to us. Yeah. Anyway, uh, you know, the thing thing about it is you mentioned now two things that are threatening. One is this um, the one at Christmas. What was it called again? Uh, this is the grateful. 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 Mm -hmm. And you mentioned uh, want to cry. Okay. And the the Christmas grateful happened at Christmas, but we haven't heard about it since. I mean, I haven't. 
And, and then WannaCry was a year ago, and we haven't heard much about that. Does this mean these things have been resolved? They, they say it came up on the screen, and then they went off the screen. Did somebody fix them? What happened? Well, they paid a ransom. The, the way that ransomware works is that it gets onto a computer, right? And then once it's inside that computer, it says, okay, I'm going to silently encrypt all these files. And we've had to physically do this for clients to remediate this problem. And once it encrypts all the files, then it says, great, would you like your files back? Yeah. If so, here's the ransom demand. Yeah. It can be anywhere from $1,000 to $5,000. The highest we've seen here locally is $105,000. Wow. They didn't pay mm -hmm. it, though. They did not, but they also did lose 12 years of data. Oh, they never got it back. Never got it back. And, and, but if you can figure out the encryption and de-encrypt it, you get it back. Well, these guys are smart. What they figured out is that in order for you to figure out the encryption would take several years right, to reverse engineer that encryption key. And they only give you a few days before the ransom goes up. And then a few days after that, before they just erase all of your files. They destroy the files. So that's their way of preventing you from spending any time to fix it. Correct. So what happened? I mean, what's the end of the story? Are they still doing it? Correct. In fact, it's become more and more targeted. So 2017 was kind of the proving ground for this, uh, for this kind of activity. What we're seeing now, and you can see this almost on a daily basis, um, we have three hospitals that I read about just this morning that were infected with uh, ransomware. Power companies are now becoming infected with ransomware. And it gets more diabolical than that. They're exploiting very specific targeted attacks in order to do very specific things. So for example, in the case of these uh, energy companies, they look at the energy company's website. And on the website, they have beautiful graphics showing the company's equipment and with engineers standing proudly in front of them, right? And so the uh, criminal looks at that and says, wow, I recognize that piece of equipment behind them. Let's go on their website and see what jobs they have opening. Oh, great, they're hiring. Let's send out some uh, resumes with oh, some malicious this is payloads. sophisticated stuff. But well understood and well known. And not simple, right? I'm sorry, it's simple, but it's, it's not terribly easy to do. Yeah. Uh, they take these, uh, these resumes, they match a, a qualifying resume, they submit it to the power company. Within that, they have malicious payload geared directly towards uh, taking down that piece of equipment that's there at the power company, and they have yeah. been successful yeah. at gaining control of a couple of them. Yeah. Luckily, not here in the U.S. as far as we know, uh, but it has been around the world. And we're seeing more of that uh, when it comes to healthcare, uh, when it comes to insurance, big boys, right? Uh, but big data. Big data and big money. Yeah. And uh, the, these hospitals in particular that I, I reference, uh, they, were, they did pay this ransom of, it was an undisclosed amount, but they did pay the ransom and they were able to kind of get back up and going. But ransom is, is a very, uh, very finicky kind of business. It's like a real ransom where they're holding someone hostage. You give them money, they say, you know, maybe we want some more. There's no guarantee of you receiving your data back after you've paid that amount. Sure. Mm -hmm. And the FBI does, says that you should never pay the ransom because it encourages this activity cont to continue. But people do. They do. Well, it's just it's, like real kidnapping. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. People do. Well, it gets worse. Yeah. So there's this new strain of ransomware called JAF ransomware. How do you spell that? J-A-F-F. -F. And JAF ransomware is fun for the criminal. They've gotten wise. They say, you know, these ransomware payments are going down. People have great backups. They just take their computers, either throw them away or wipe them clean, put in all new data, and off they go. They've just lost their opportunity. So instead, before encrypting the files, they take all these files and send them off to a cloud storage somewhere, some compromised place. And then they encrypt the files, and then they ask you for, for money. And they say, oh, and you know what? If you don't pay us, we're going to take those files that we stole and sell them on the dark web. And if they contain things like PII, which is personally identifiable information, social security numbers. Oh, that's one step further, info. isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. So the price goes up. I mean, what, what, do you, what do you do to stop this? Well, believe it or not, the best defense is education. It's what do you tell simple. them to do? Well, the, there's, there's ongoing education and training programs. And a lot of it's common sense. So obviously there are some technology solutions that can mitigate some of this damage. But whenever we work with an organization to secure their, uh, to increase their, their posture in terms of cybersecurity, what we do is we make sure, okay, look, we put in the best of breed equipment to protect you, but there's still this element that is human. Uh, sometimes uh, I've heard it called a chair to keyboard interface error, i.e. the person between the chair and the keyboard. Uh, you wanna look at that, uh, for example, we send out weekly email trainings, and the one that went out this week uh, was about how to identify misspelled words and emails. 
and how to identify a bad link in the email itself. So if, for example, if you get a, an email from Chase demanding payment and you hover over the link and it says some long Ukrainian website, you know it's, it's not Chase. It's not Chase. I always do that now. Mm -hmm. Always do that now. So okay, so that's the phishing side of thing, you know, where they're doing what is social engineering and phishing engineering on you. But once you've got the pox, you know, how do you get it? Once they send you that awful email that tells it makes all these threats and demands a ransom, um, what what do you do? Well, the the best defense is to have a good business continuity plan or backup plan. And so backup helps. Backup. You got to backup, and and you got to backup in such a way so that your restore will be min minimal disruption. Yeah. And the larger the organization, right, the more disruptive it could be. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's kind of a hidden fact, but 60% of all businesses that get hit with ransomware within six months go out of business. Out of business. Out of business. They simply You're cannot so recover. so disruptive. It's that disruptive. This is really damaging. Mm -hmm. So if I'm a prosecutor or the FBI or whatever, some law enforcement agency, um, what do I do? How successful have they been? Have they caught any of these guys? Uh, I, I'm, I'm not at liberty to say because I do work with them on some of this stuff, but uh, I do know that they are able to, uh, they usually know about the threat actors beforehand. So they know that this stuff is going on, it's just um, they're busy putting out the real big fires, uh, real big problems that they have to deal with. And uh, a small business, uh, such as what is what, 98% of our businesses here on the island, uh, is going to kind of fall by the wayside when it comes to something like this. They uh, can't afford to deal with it. Yeah. Right. They're going to go back to paper and pencil and, and try oh, to run their business was, that way. Yeah, yeah. terrible. Well, now, I remember the, the, uh, state, yeah. the state of Hawaii uh, Attorney General's Office had a, a unit that was uh, supposed to be involved in, you know, computer crime, not only cyber, cyber terrorism and all that, but computer crime. And I, and I think my recollection is they had a, a one lawyer or two and they didn't have a whole lot of investigative resources, they didn't have a, you know, an army of guys working for them that could actually identify or investigate, find out where it was coming from, talk to other agencies and all that. So I mean, I don't think that we do as much as we can to find these guys and prosecute them and punish them. There's really no disincentive, is there? It works just swell for them, doesn't it? Well, let me tell you about who these guys are. Maybe we should have that conversation. So. This is, you know, there's kind of this misconception that it's, it's this guy in a hood. I'm sure you've seen it. A guy in a hood, he's on a computer, he's got a cup of coffee next to him. In the basement. In the basement, right? Maybe some matrix looking, you know, letters going in his background and he's, he's sitting there hacking away, right? And he's, he's stealing money. That image is completely incorrect. Um, cybersecurity, cyber criminals are well-funded. They are organized. And they typically have ties to larger organizations. Like governments. Correct. And there is a strong incentive to keep that relationship alive because there's so much money at stake. Uh, just as a comparison, the largest bank heist was, I think, $30 million. And last year, something like $40 billion estimated was stolen by cyber criminals. So it's a completely different ballgame. You know what's an economic weapon is mm -hmm. what it is. I mean, if I'm North Korea and I want to really hurt this country. Sure, I can try to bring the power plants down, but if I take all the data and separate the data from the companies that need the data, I can really put a dent in the economy in general, make one great big attack like that, using proven technology, technology we know that works. So when these guys are developing the ransomware, they're actually, and, and they're state actors or they're working for state actors, seems to me they're, they're involved in a process that could be, you know, like war. Uh, against any country that has companies that require their own data. Huh? Yeah, and, and, and it's not just them, it's an entire industry. Cyber criminals are not uh, just, you know, uh, completely isolated in these very organized uh, syndicates. There's actually industries where uh, you can kind of get your own kit and go after a company yourself if you wanted to. Yeah. So it's, it's become commoditized you mean, in that you way. You mean a targeted company. Correct. And uh, what is beginning to happen a lot with this, these cyber criminals is actually so much data being stolen that it's very difficult for them to even commoditize all that stuff. So for example, Equifax, right? Uh, how many records were stolen? Over half the uh, US populations, right? And there was, a, there was a breach a few months later that didn't really make headline news. And there's continuous breaches that happen with 
uh, smaller companies, yeah, such as cell phone carriers, and uh, you'll you see those uh, on the uh, on the on the news feed as well. Now the deal is that that information ends up on some place called the dark web. Have you heard of the dark web? Sure. So the dark web, of course, is where all this stuff ends up, and then the deep web is real, where the real nasty stuff is. But your credit card information but if you have the is right on the dark addresses, web. Addresses you can mm -hmm. you can get into both the deep and the dark web, can't you? Well, it's just degrees of the same thing. Yeah. And uh, on the dark web, they are actively selling credit card information, personally identifiable information, health records that have even been targeted. Yeah. If I say I want to get I want to get Joe Blow, right? I can go and get Joe Blow's information and do some bad things to Joe Blow, right? Sure. In fact, you know, after the show, because I don't think we should do it on camera, I can we'll look up your information to see if you're on the dark web, because you might be. Okay. Well, that that makes me feel like I need to take a break, Attila, <laughs> to react. That's Attila Ceres. He's the CEO and proprietor of SOSTechSolutions.com right here in Hawaii, Nay. And we're talking about a new year for cybersecurity, or terrorism as the case may be. We'll be right back with Attila. I'm going to the game and it's going to be great. Early arriving for a little tailgate. I usually drink but won't be drinking today because I'm the designated driver and that's okay. It's nice to be the guy that keeps his friends in line. Keeps them from drinking too much so we can have a great time. A little responsibility can go a long way because it's all about having fun on game day. I'm the guy you want to be. Let's go. Oh, hi guys. It's RB Kelly. I'm your host of Out of the Comfort Zone, where I find cool people with cool solutions to problems that all of us face. Now, the thing is, we're really cool. And I only invite really cool people, but the thing is, I think you're kind of cool too, so I think you should come and watch. That's Thursdays at 11 a.m. here on OC16 Television with Think Tech Hawaii. I'm R.B. Kelly, host of Out of the Comfort Zone, and I will see you next Thursday. I mean, the stuff on there will be Okay, now during the break, yeah. Taylor showed me Cyware, mm -hmm. C-Y-W-A-R-E. What is that? Well, it's a great source. Uh, they, uh, they assemble a lot of uh, cybersecurity news in a nice, pleasing format that anyone can pick up and, and watch. Um, one of the other feeds, so we watch a lot of feeds to get some of this stuff. Obviously, we work with uh, federal and state uh, for some of their proprietary information. Uh, but uh, you can also pick some of the stuff up, uh, Cyware, and even uh, Flipboard, which is built oh, in the Windows Yeah, I have yeah. Flipboard, yeah. Just filter out your categories so you don't get all that trash about whatever's going on in the White House and, right. and, and pick up just the uh, cybersecurity and new tech news, yeah. and you'll see some scary yeah. stuff on there. Yeah. Well, scary stuff. I, I want to talk about that. I want to talk about you. You know, I mean, if I were you, I'd, I'd be slightly paranoid already, knowing, knowing as you do about all these troubles and threats and bad guys and malware just all surrounding us. We're sinking in a world of this stuff. Doesn't, doesn't it give you a headache, actually, to know about all that? Well, wouldn't it be better that I become informed and our staff also become informed as, as much as possible so we can best protect our clients? I mean, can that's you, what it's can all about. you protect me? Yeah, I'm ABC Company. Can you tell me, Jay, no problemo, we're going to protect you from all these threats? We're going to Can you tell me that? Sure. Well, the idea is that it's best effort. Everyone's going to give you best effort, right? You go to McDonald's, they're going to give you the best effort hamburger they can. They can't guarantee you're not going to get food poisoning, <laughs> but they'll give you the best effort, and overall, they provide a consistent experience. Yeah. In the same way, uh, every organization is like that, and we do best effort cybersecurity with the best tools available. And guess what? Every year, those tools change. So we keep giving the best tools, and then the best tools, and then next year, and the next year. So that's what—that's kind of the the process. So who's in. winning this deal? I mean, we have you know more malware going on all the time. It's everywhere. You know, you don't have to do much computing to see it filter in on you and get in the way of things, or worse. Um, and we have we have cybersecurity guys who specialize and try to come up with fixes and and you know protections and the like. Um, who's winning? Well, define winning. Who's who's making more money? We are, <laughs> that's for sure. We're 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 still ahead. You know, the well, U.S. Know, is still but, ahead. But who's who's winning in terms of you know? Can you beat them? Can they beat you? Who comes out ahead? You know, your comment a little while ago about how this large percentage of companies that have been attacked by ransomware go out of go out of business. I would say the ransom guys are winning. No. Well, that that is that is one statistic, but you can also see that uh, after a major uh, data loss. So not, not necessarily a data breach, 60% of businesses go under. 80% uh, of restaurants go under within the first year. 
There's a lot of factors that can come in there. Yeah. But this is a it, you know it's a confounding variable. So when it comes to actually figuring out if this was the cause, I'm sure it's one of the things, but it could be the final nail in the coffin for a company. Yeah. So it just, just depends on the size it's, it's of the business. It's part of doing business now. Yeah, Absolutely. Exactly. I mean, you know, as a business owner, you can expect a, a lot of problems from your employees, from, from legal problems, from all kinds of angles. So this yeah, is just sure, one more. Yeah, sure. implications, mm -hmm. you know, because you have a duty now. It's a duty. You, you as a proprietor serving clientele, holding their data, um, you have a duty to protect. And if you don't do anything, I, that's clearly a legal exposure to you and your company. So that's another way you could go down um, by failing to take care of it, you know, in violation of your obligations to your clientele. Well, and from an insurance perspective, they're not going to insure or even uh, you know, obviously reimburse a company that didn't put essentially locks on the doors, uh, that the doors being their computers. Yeah. They didn't properly secure their data. They didn't put in a business continuity plan. And they have a responsibility to their own customers to be able to operate. And they failed to do so because yeah. they didn't you know, hire like a cybersecurity company or someone who specializes in this to come protect them. So let's take the, the retailer who, mm -hmm. you know, who got the grateful uh, bug. You know, I, f I find it very interesting. It reminds me of Stuxnet. Mm -hmm. Stuxnet, how, how the guys who developed Stuxnet, you know, propagated it all over the world. It went everywhere. But it was calculated to go to one kind of nuclear controller made by Siemens, just happened to be in Iran, just happened to be there. So it went everywhere. I mean, it must have been millions of machines were infected with no effect. But it went to this kind of machine in Iran, and it blew up the center, center futures. So the same thing here. You could target. You could get on retail. You could, you could bring a company down on, on the retail. And I guess they, you know, one way or the other, through social uh, engineering or otherwise, they can get it onto your retail machine. Now, the retailer, I guess this hasn't been solved yet, so every time I put my credit card in, and I do, I'll admit it, I do, okay, it's at risk. Does the, does the, the retailer have to tell me, should he tell me that I'm at risk? They're obligated by PCI compliance. So they, have, they do have a compliance standard that they have to, and we should talk about compliance here before we run out of time, but yeah. uh, compliance it does require them to notify you that something's happened. So you may have received something in the, in the mail that says, hey, you know, I'm sorry to say, but uh, our point of sale systems have been compromised or our database have been compromised. Be sure to keep it on your credit report. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Yeah. And that's it. I mean, what else yeah. can you possibly do? Yeah, what am I going to do with that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll cut all my credit cards and start walking around with cash. No, I'm not going to do that. You know, that's not, that's not functional. Well, as, as long as we know where you are, you know, we can put a blindfold on you and, you know, yeah. Yeah. take all your money. <laughs> well, maybe we should change our credit cards every two weeks. You know, that would be safer, wouldn't it? Well, it just really depends. I mean, if you really need uh, some sort of a credit card, uh, you can put a credit freeze on your account. So that was, uh, if you go to my blog, you'll see I wrote up an entire thing about what to do if your uh, personal information was compromised during the Equifax breach. Yeah. And one of the things to do is to put a credit card freeze on there. Yes, it's 30 bucks. But you know what? If you're not getting a new credit card all the time, that's okay too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, how do I get your blog? How do I find it? Your newsletter is blog, same thing? Yeah, well, there's links what, to it. What's the name of it and how do I find it? Well, if you go to our website, sosy.com or sostechsolutions.com, there's a link right there to the blog. We okay. have all kinds of stuff on there. And if you just Google my name, you see tons of stuff. Okay, until it's a rest. That's what, two T's. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you got it. Okay. So anyway, so uh, in closing, we only have one, a couple of minutes left here. What are you going to spend your time on this year? You're going to spend your time on NISO 800-171 federal uh, cybersecurity requirements? Oh, are you going yeah. to spend your time on the Intel chip problem? Are you going to spend your time on other kinds of malware and ransomware and what have you? What does it look like for you, Attila? Well, predictions for 2018, big time. Uh, the chip problem, the meltdown problem, is going to affect a lot of cloud service providers. We're going to see some service outages. Uh, there's going to be more targeted and sophisticated ransomware. And the NIST 800-171 uh, requirement uh, that the federal government has put out on all federal contractors that receive any sort of funds from them, even on a project that they're participating in as a sub, they are required to protect the data. This is called CUI, uh, Controlled Unclassified Information. They're, they're obligated to protect that information and uh, keep it from getting into the wrong hands by all these ways that we already described. So. Part of those NIST requirements, and I know we could talk about this a lot longer, there's training involved, there's best practices involved. And a lot of the stuff that the, these NIST requirements that are coming out, uh, they're really guidelines that What's you should be doing for? anyway. NISD, what does it stand for? Uh, National Institute of something or other, okay, but it's the yeah. standards for... It, standards. Yeah. Right. So every organization has to pick some sort of standards that they can go by. 
And uh, so whether it's an engineering standard uh, or if it's an architecture standard or you know, one of these other standards that they're going to choose is an industry standard, the software development standards, uh, the NIST standard is kind of a general standard that the federal government has imposed that says, look, follow this and you'll be okay. Uh, follow this and we'll deal with you. We'll have business with you. Don't follow this and we can't use you as Correct. a contractor. Yeah. In fact, if anyone has, uh, has bid on a contract after October 1st of last year, uh, they're required to submit all their uh, proof of uh, cyber compliance. And uh, if any contracts are awarded and you think you're in the clear, uh, that can be contested by someone based on that standard. So it's another, you know, um, a bullet in the, uh, in, the, in the barrel of their gun against trying to knock you down uh, from a, an awarded contract. All the big major uh, federal contractors, anyone with it, even as a subcontractor to a federal, are required to go by this NIST standard. And it was enacted in uh, December 31st of last year, so it's just a few weeks old now. So they're going to begin uh, enforcing that. They're going to be uh, requiring this stuff. And uh, a lot of it is paperwork, but a lot of it is also procedural. So it's not terribly complicated stuff. It's just a lot of little moving parts that you should really put into your business. And at the end of the day, it's really best practices. Do you have a program or do you have a written procedure for bringing someone on and bringing someone off and hiring someone and uh, you know, doing drug tests and these kind of things? How do you protect this information? Are your employees trained on cybersecurity and how to protect yourself? These are all really important questions that even as a business owner, especially if you're handling classified information, you should have a really good handle on. And uh, particularly for all these subcontractors that are really small, right, that are maybe just making a buy, they haven't thought of these things. They're out there doing plumbing, electrical, et cetera. They're not thinking about the actual critical data that they're holding on to that if compromised, could compromise the entire project and our country. I'll give you another thing. A <clears throat> bunch, <of, clears throat> bunch of really good investigators <clears throat> who are trained in computer technology and prosecutors, find a few of those buggers. Find them and prosecute them. If the statutes aren't stiff enough, make them stiffer and put those guys in the pillory in the stocks for about a thousand years and make it public and try to diminish the amount of this, this activity. Because right now it's rampant. That's what it sounds like to me. And there's no downside to doing it. And, and if there's no downside in this country, well, there's no downside in Ukraine either at all. In fact, your government might support you. <clears throat> so, you know, what I get is we're not stopping a flood of this kind of activity. We're dealing with it on a completely defensive basis and we, we aren't stopping anybody from doing it. We've got to take action against them, don't you think? Uh, absolutely, and it, it's like toxic mold. It just continues to grow if, um, if unchecked. And uh, this is, you know, 2017 was the biggest uh, year in history for, um, for breaches and data loss and all these other big problems. 2018, it's gonna be even worse. Oh my goodness. Yeah, every year it keeps getting bigger and bigger. Back to Walden Pond, you know, back to the, back to the Alaskan uh, hinterland so we can get away from all this. Well, you know, uh, environmental uh, sciences and uh, what we're doing to the planet is probably a different conversation, but you know, if we can get back to it, I, I really hope so. Hope for the good old days. Mm -hmm. So in the end, you know, what we've learned here today with the Tillis arrest is that you know, this kind of computer malware and ransomware and all these horrible things that these smart guys are developing, sometimes by themselves and sometimes um, has hired weapons or even state actors, um, you know, it's, it's not so much that, it's, it's really sort of like toxic mold. Mm -hmm. That's what we learned. Thank you, Attila. Thanks for having me. Come back soon. Great. <laughs> I will. <laughs>